You may not have noticed, but there's been somewhat of an explosion of indie games lately. The success of games with much lower fidelity than what we've come to expect from AAA studios is refreshing to me. Why is it that some indie games with tiny budgets have been able to connect with people in ways that many games with massive budgets have not? Of course, there are lots of reasons for that, but I think there's one concept in particular that's important. I think often indies have an intuitive understanding of that concept. In fact, I think personally it could sum up the whole indie movement fairly well, and it's this. A meaningful experience is created with far fewer elements than we've been dumping our money into in the games industry. The best way to introduce that idea is with an interesting psychological experiment. If you haven't seen it already, pause this video and take a look at this short clip from researchers Daniel Simmons and Christopher Chabry. For those of you who can't be bothered, the premise is simple. You're asked to perform a focused counting task in a busy scene, which most people can do. After you're done, however, it's revealed that halfway through the video, a guy in a gorilla suit walked into the middle of the frame, beat his chest, and left. And if you're like me, and most people, you didn't notice, which is kind of surprising. I would say that this video basically demonstrates that having a goal filters perception on a pre-conscious level. That is, when you're actively engaged in a task, you likely won't even see details that are not related to that task. In other words, you very likely will notice all of the beautiful details in, say, Dark Souls 3 when encountering a new environment, but when enemies start hacking at you, as far as your subconscious is concerned, you might as well be fighting against a grey smudge backdrop. I don't care how much you like the lore. You probably wouldn't see it if Hidetaka Miyazaki himself popped up and started pointing at landmarks. My point here isn't that we need less detail in games exactly. For example, exploring interesting environments is part of what makes Dark Souls great. It's part of the expected user experience. My point is that if we're going to use our resources effectively, we first need to understand what our expected user experiences are, because without that, there's really no other basis for deciding where we invest our money. With a little analysis, I constantly see expensive content in video games that I'm sure must amount to a six-foot-tall gorilla for most players. Just how many six-foot-tall gorillas have you and I not seen while playing even our favorite games? How much do you think those gorillas cost exactly? This is a problem that shows up everywhere in the games industry. Many developers seem obsessed with creating detailed worlds as if that will somehow automatically create meaningful experiences. I'm going to pick on a slightly older game here. Consider the opening of Heavy Rain, which has you interact with several objects as the main character goes about his day job. This seems, to me, to be an honorable but mistaken attempt to act out a fantasy of a detailed, fully interactive world, ignoring, of course, that opening and closing a drafting table is boring. It's interactivity that I don't want. Why even attempt to create this illusion? It's exorbitantly expensive, and I don't want to do those behaviors. If you want me to feel immersed, give me a meaningful motivation, and I'll get swept up in your world. And while that's happening, I probably won't notice that the drafting table is interactive because it doesn't matter. It's a six-foot-tall gorilla. There's an assumption in video games that basically amounts to this. One day, we'll be able to create worlds that are as detailed as reality, at which point our games will become deeply engaging and meaningful. This is a collective hallucination. It's not fully interactive worlds with infinite resolution that create meaningful experiences. Meaning comes from a well-designed motivational frame that allows you to perceive the world around you in a specific way. That is, a way that gives you access to the resources you need to progress inside that motivational frame. I think that might be what meaning is, like technically. 
I think that the success of indie games can generally be explained by that fundamental idea. A good game isn't necessarily one that vomits detail in your face. It's one that understands what emotional experience it wants to create, one that establishes a player goal that supports that experience and presents players with only the details that help them progress towards that goal. And in my opinion, indie games have been about uncovering that fact. So here's to the indies. Until next time, I'm John from Over the Moon, and keep looking out for them gorillas, because they will take your money.